Oh, God damn it. Will you get out of here? That's it. Get off my property. Get off my land, you piece of Don't post that. This weekend, more than maybe ever before, I have seen so many people that I even considered friends outing themselves as colonizers. There is a lot to be said about what is happening in Palestine and Israel right now. In an effort to avoid getting mass reported and slammed by pro-Israel bots with death threats and crazy shit on my page, I'm not gonna comment on that here. But I do wanna say one thing, as a white person, this is gonna be good. As a white person with indigenous heritage, I think a lot of Americans struggle hardcore talking and thinking openly about what is going on right now in the Middle East because they know that them themselves are sitting on stolen land as well. A lot of people will claim that they well, are- Pause there. what I tell you? I hadn't even seen this lady before. And she makes my point for me. She makes the whole thesis of my show for me. Keep going. Against colonization, that they are decolonizers <laughs> until they see it happening in real life. I want to be so clear, so, so clear. That's pretty clear. That innocence dying on either side is so beyond up. But if now. But put a pause there. There we go. But no, I want to be clear. She starts out, she goes, I can't even believe people I once called friends are opposed to Hamas raping 13-year-olds and killing babies. I can't believe that they would object to that. Can you believe that? I used to call them friends, but they think it's bad to murder and rape and kill and behead civilians. Can you believe? I don't feel like I don't even know them. Now, I want to be clear. I think it's bad to hurt innocent people. But, and here's the but, give me the but. But if now, right now, is the first and only time you are going to say, end the violence, where the f have you been the last 75 years? The last 75 f years. It's estimated by many that in the first five years of Israeli occupation alone, a million Palestinians were killed. And that was only in the 1940s, okay? <laughs> I want you to take a long and hard look at this graphic. And keep in mind, this only goes back to 2008, and it does not include the last three years. This is an ethnic cleansing of indigenous folks. And that is not to say that some indigenous. of the people on the right side are not indigenous. It is just to say that the people on the left are definitely indigenous. Put a pause there. See, there you go. That's where the indigenous thing gets a little tricky. The one part I'm sympathetic to in her argument is the historical observation that in the 1940s, lots of Jews came to the state of Israel to, as part of the founding of the nation state of Israel, which was preceded by about a century of this nationalist movement that came largely out of Europe for Zionism, which uh, was, was granted by the British Empire and then resulted in the mandate for Palestine and then in the founding of the nation state of Israel. She's saying, look, these people came in and then there were some conflicts because a lot of people came into this region of the world and then they were fighting each other. That's true. Who were the indigenous people here? Because the theological and historical claim made by the Israelis is that they have a right to the land because they were there 2,000 years ago. So I'm a little skeptical of all of these sorts of millennia old claims to, to land, but that's, that's the same claim made by the left. The left is saying that the Native Americans have a right to the United States because they were here 500 years ago. Why is it fine for the Cheyenne, but it's not fine for the nation state of Israel? She recognizes there's a problem there. So she goes, well, no, and the, and the Israelis too. They, some of them might be indigenous too. But the Palestinians, they're more indigenous. What do you mean they're more indigenous? What does that mean? It's the same argument that you see in the United States. Well, we need to give the land back to the Native Americans. Which ones? We got to give it back to the, what, the Comanche? Sure, the Comanche. Well, what about, shouldn't we give it back to the Apache that the Comanche took their land from? Well, okay. Who are we supposed to give Mount Rushmore back to? The Sioux, the Lakota, the who? <laughs> which, which group? There's so many of them that conquered each other. The last Native American group to, to occupy the Black Hills, where we have Mount Rushmore, 
only conquered that land in 1776, right around the founding of the country. Which one do you give it to? Who's more indigenous? What, what does it even mean, more indigenous? Keep going. So on this Indigenous People's Day, I want you to genuinely ask yourself, do you support decolonization as a construct? Do you just want the bumper sticker for the back of your f-ing car? Or do you support it in actuality? Or here's a third option. Do you not support it because it's very dumb and bad? That's so dumb, it makes me mad. What, what is your take on decolonization? Do you support it in word but not deed? Which is frivolous. Do you support it in word and deed? Which is when paragliders come in and start slaughtering civilians. Or do you not support decolonization because it's wrong to slaughter civilians and the historical and political claims made by the decolonizers are usually preposterous? What do you think? In the spirit of fair play, I suggest we put on these authentic Wamapoke headdresses and dance around the table. Absolutely not. That sounds highly offensive. Does it, white man? No. 